And across the nation, pet ownership is skyrocketing. That's leading to the need for more vet care, which has been hard to find recently. Over the past two years, short-staffed vet offices have been turning animals away, and appointments, well, they're getting harder and harder to book. Our Casey Montoya has the story. Hey, you. Dr. Jeff Werber has been a veterinarian for nearly four decades. You're so cute. You're so cute. What are we in for today? Over the past few years, he's seen his waiting room busier than ever, making it difficult to meet the demand. He's not alone, as the vet industry across the nation is in the midst of a crisis. We predict about a 5,000 veterinary shortage, which can jump to 15,000 by the year 2030. So it's a huge problem. But why? Dr. Werber says during COVID, as more pets got adopted, more people were seeking vet care. Staff members were also getting sick, and many vets turned to curbside service. So they would be out in the car in the parking lot, and then a nurse or a technician would go out and bring the pet in, and they'd be back and forth on the phone. That is very inefficient. So instead of seeing you know, maybe 20 or 25 patients a day, they were seeing 10 to 15. He says a lot of vets are still using curbside service today, but that's not the only reason for the vet shortage. Well, there's only 33 vet schools in the U.S., so um, there's just not enough schools right now. Dr. David Driscoll is a professor and program director for the Animal Health Science Program at Cal Poly Pomona. Students here are trained to become registered vet techs and can also take the courses that will allow them to apply to vet school. He says their enrollment numbers have drastically increased over the last few years. There's tons of students trying to get into vet school right now as well. I think um, <laughs> the current average is 15 percent uh, of people that apply for vet school get in, so 85 percent don't. I want to be a vet, but it's really competitive, so if I don't get in, I do want something to fall back on, which is why I also want to be an RVT. Uh, you want to put the leads on? The industry isn't just losing vets. The veterinary technicians are leaving as well. They get into it because they love the animals, and they get, you know, they figure out economically they can't make it. Driscoll says they're also seeing a significant mental health crisis. The suicide rate with veterinarians is about four times as high as the general population, and then about two times as high as medical human doctors. It's such a concern, college professors are now adding the topic to their classroom discussions. She's very transparent up front about what the, like, suicide rates are, and just, like, making us aware that it's going to be a stressful job, so to Make sure you have like a work-life balance. But Dr. Werber says that work-life balance is leading to longer wait times and fewer appointments for our pets. Younger generations are coming out and they want to work a 30-hour work week. And they don't want weekends or nights because they want that work-life balance and they deserve it. Hello. Until there's a solution, vets who love what they do will continue to pick up the slack. It's a really rewarding job, but also, you know, very demanding as well. Casey Montoya, KTLA 5 News.